application fees, unit holding fees, right? These are incredibly important. I see so many landlords coming to me like, yo, man, uh, I don't know if I should make them pay this fee or I made them pay the fee, but it was not, it was a refundable deposit, blah, 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 blah. Like, dude, a refundable deposit? What the fuck is a refundable deposit? What in the fuck is the point of a deposit if that motherfucker's refundable, right? You gotta make them pay a fee to apply. You gotta make them pay a fee to hold the unit off the market, right? So many landlords out there. All the tenants, they'll come in, they'll say, yeah, I'm interested in your property, and you get 10 people that are interested in your property. You as a landlord, you got to pay money to the credit screening companies, the background companies, right? That money is coming out of your pocket, right? And if you think all 10 of those people actually qualify for your property, you're crazy. You need to create some type of barrier, right? That barrier needs to be money, right? If you say, because you watch this video, I don't, have, I don't rent to anybody with evictions, right? If there is no fee for that application, you're going to get a bunch of people with evictions that are just like crossing their fingers hoping it doesn't show up on their uh, background, right? They're going to, you know, hope to God that it doesn't show up because why wouldn't they, right? Why wouldn't they put in the application? It doesn't cost them anything, right? But if you actually put that fee, you're A, going to deter those people who don't qualify from applying and you're going to reduce... Right. You're going to reduce the chance of somebody who actually was evicted and somehow it's not properly uh, showing up on their report. Right. And then they squeeze through and they get into your property. Guys, nothing's perfect in this world. If you guys think that all these credit screening companies are 100 percent accurate, you're wrong. Nothing's 100 percent accurate. Right. So you're going to reduce that, mitigate that risk. Number one. Number two, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. You're going to put that uh, responsibility for them to pay for that application fee on them, right? So you're reducing your tire kickers, reducing those who don't qualify, reducing the chances of those who don't qualify, squeezing through your criteria, right? And you're not going out of pocket to screen all these folks, right? So that's part one of this. And then the second part is after somebody has been approved, okay, you might approve somebody, but they didn't have to pay anything, so they just went to the next guy down the street, and now they want to rent his house, and you're out that money again, right? But if they had to pay for it, they might wait to apply at the next guy's house, okay? So now you've had them pay for it. You like them. You decide, hey, Mr. Tenant, I'm going to go ahead and give you the apartment. Let's say it's January 1st. They're a good quality tenant, so they're not trying to move in until February 1st. Why? Because they're responsible human beings, and they need to give their previous landlord a 30-day notice. And of course, they're not going to give their previous landlord a 30-day notice before they actually find a new house, because anybody who does that's a fucking moron, and you don't want to rent to fucking morons. So now you got 30 days where your apartment's going to sit empty, okay, while you wait for your responsible tenant's uh, previous lease and term with their previous landlord to expire. You can't just be like, cool, man, here's the lease. Talk to you on February 1st when you pay your first month's rent. No. People change their minds all the time. You got to do something to hold them there, and that is you make them pay the holding fee, right? If it's going to be holding the property off the market for 30 days, they need to pay an amount equal to 30 days of rent, right? If it's like a two-week hold or whatever, it's got to be half the rent, and it's got to be a non-refundable fee. Like, I see these people out there. They're doing crazy shit like, oh, hold deposit, and then like 29 days in, the tenant's like, yeah, dude. Uh, if something happened, I don't want to move anymore. And then the landlord's like, oh, okay, here's your money back. What in the fuck is that? Why the fuck would you charge them a deposit in the first place if you're just going to give them their fucking money back? That makes no fucking sense. It's got to be a non-refundable holding deposit or you are going to get burned all over the place and then your dumbass missed that month of rent and the only person you have to blame is yourself. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.